All right, let's take a look at the uh, on the S&P. So every day we look at these levels and we try to find out the major inflection point levels. These, these are supply demand lines, these big uh, cyan lines or these light blue lines. So yesterday at 8.15, right here at 8.15, I marked these three levels off. Those are my three levels I marked off. So we want to trade those levels. These are uh, usually 24 to 48 hours ahead of time give you major support and resistance. So we want to look in the future on possible major support and resistance where this market could look to find a major support and major resistance. So I gave these three levels. I marked these levels up. They were static for the day. This is a fresh one that came in. But as you can tell, this one I marked up at 8.30, that was the low for the session at 10.30. This one I said if we break out of the 34 or 36 and a quarter, we have a big run up into 57. So we had a 20 point S&P play. I said if we broke retested, and that's what you want to do. What happened after I talked about this, we came up, we hit our head right at that level, and we got rejected. These are the best trades to take a trade off of because rejected levels are future launching points. That's called a rejected level off of a supply line. I love to see rejected supply lines broken, retested, become new demand lines. So the market came down. This is our line in the sand. This blue level tells you where major support and resistance is and lets you know if you're above it, you need to be buying. If you're below it, you need to be selling. But I want you to take a look at the price section. What we, what we try to do is that was my main level. I said, if we get through that and retest it, we should go up 20 points on the S&P. Here it broke through. We broke right through, right, went right to the next supply line. Old supply becomes new demand. It broke through it. We got to close two candles above it. There's my retest. Now, it can't close back below it. This is the key. We do not want to close back below it. And then our next level up. You can scale at these levels, but the next level, I said it go all the way to here, and we actually hit that for the high of the session. So we not only my supply line that I drew up yesterday was the high of the session, but my demand line was the low of the session. So you got you to pick your spots in the market, and we want to look for break retest trades off these key levels. So that is the key what we try to do in the trading room. We try to see where major supply and demand lines are, major market profile levels are, and then we try to buy and sell those levels on a retracement. Let's look at today's price action, what I'm looking for. All right, here's a major supply line this morning. You can see the market's responding. The S&P's got rejected off of it a couple times. So we got rejected almost to the exact tick. We got uh, the profile right there, the high value area, you can't see it, but the, the red you can barely see it. The high value is stacked right on top of my supply line. So now I got two times indicator suggesting that this is a major resistance level. So it got rejected almost to the tick. If you look at it, there is the high of 61 and three quarters. And so what we want to do is we want to see a couple candle close outside of this level this morning. A couple candle close. And what do I mean by a couple candle close? For example, you want to see this. I'm move this out of the way so I can show you. You want to see a two candle close. Here's where we broke our control point, the most volume that's traded. I want to close a couple candle close outside. Oops. That's my LVA, but never retraced right here. Two candle close. I want to see this over here. I want to see a couple candle close outside. Then I want to see a retracement. Now, the retracement's got to come within two ticks of this control point, which it did. And that's a long side setup. Positive market delta, and that was a buy. It came down the control point. You're allowed to take the first and second test of the retest. That's a buy here. Stop right at my control point. Almost to the tick on my control point. The control point's the most volume that's traded in that particular instrument. And then we start moving up. These are the more important indicators. If you're going to trade any type of market, you need to trade leading indicators. The two top indicators in the room are market profile. That's our top indicator in the room. Number two would be a supply-demand line. 
That's our second top tier indicator. Because what these are, these are leading indicators. This is actually showing us what the order flow of the market is. These two will show us right here. These are buy setups, right? Right off the control point. The big green line, the big blue line, the red line is over top of my supply line, which is just going to give us a beautiful looking setup this morning. I mean, you got to love when you get these two that stack on top of each other. That gives you what's called major confluence. And they are stacked right there on top of each other. And they stopped almost to, I believe, the tip. Let's see what the high was. The high on that was 61, 61 and a half, and I'm at 61 and three quarters right there. And the high here was 62 and 62. So it came within a quarter, uh, one tick at this high and one tick of this high. Exceeded by one tick here and one tick here. Now look, it's getting rejected again. So we know we're not looking to buy the break retest until we do what? Very simple. We need to close two candle close, back-to-back -back closes, two green candles above this level. Once I see that, I'll look for a retracement, and then I'll look for a positive market delta or green bar without closing back below it. I do not want to close two candles close outside of the supply line in high value area and then close right back below it. It's got to be two back-to-back -back candles. One candle is for novice traders. A lot of traders get whipsawed on highs and lows, on breakouts. This is a great way to avoid of trying to uh, to avoid trying to buy a false breakout. We want a two candle close above, then the retracement. So that, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to use market profile supply demand lines to fire us in trades at these key support and resistance levels. The three most important indicators on here is your big red thick line that's overlapped over my supply line, the big blue, big green. And then you got the light blue supply demand lines. We're looking for just for break retest trade. Now the third tier, I call it a second tier or third tier indicator. You do not want to use this by itself. These are called my SIM dots. They're worthless by themselves, but they're excellent when used confluence with market profile supply demand. This is more of a second or third tier indicator, I call it. These are first tier indicators. Nothing, in my opinion, can beat market profile. It's been around since 1985. You can see it stopped the market almost to the tick, within one tick again today, uh, almost to the tick. What was a low here? The low down here was, um, what was it? Low is 51 and three quarters, and my market profile is 51 and three quarters. Stopped to the exact tick. Actually, in my control, it's very accurate. It's been working since 1985. I use a very long-term market profile. But you can see stop to the tick within one tick here, exceeded by one tick there. So it's extremely accurate. So that's my number one top tier indicator. My second tier indicator is supply and demand. The market doesn't work without supply and demand. So supply and demand is timeless. It's worked in the history of the market. What I've done is I've got these to print 24 to 48 hours ahead of time to give you major support and resistance on any market going forward. So what we can do then is we can use these two top tier indicators right here to determine if we need to, uh, where our buy and sell entries, our, our high probability trades are going to possibly be happening. The SIM dots my third tier indicator. Now what the SIM dots can do is this. I call them confluence trades. And what conf confluence trades are, let's say the market uh, uh, breaks out here and we start rolling up and we want to look for a breakout like this. It's a very simple pattern. It's an ABC pattern. Everybody should know it. One, two, three, ABC, you break out, you retest, and then we go for a green bar reversal long. That's what you're trying to see. Well, if you break out and you retest and you're retesting the market profile, the HVA is right underneath this. You can see at the red, you can see the shades of it right there, red, and the supply lines right there, which becomes a new demand. Once supply breaks, becomes new demand. So that's going to be a retest trade this morning. But what if the SIM dots match up with it also? Then you got three times indicators showing you all at the same price point in time. So what I like to do there, and I'll show you when the market's moving. Um, when the market's moving in a direction, uh, let's say when you break through the symmetry, this lined up with one of our profiles yesterday. I mean, our, uh, this was actually a supply line. So supply line was here. Our demand, I'm sorry, becomes new supply. So when it broke through, 
our demand line, it becomes a new supply, and it retests it right on my symmetry dots also. That's a great trade yesterday for us. It never closed above my symmetry. That is a third tier indicator, becomes a first tier indicator with my other two indicators. I just have three times confluence that market's in the tank. And it happened to be a big trade. It was over a 15 point S&P play. And the same thing here, we broke out of the control, we retested another confluence indicator. So I can use the symmetry dots then, not by themselves, but I can use them with confluence if my supply demand or my market profile is at the same exact place, which it was. It was there and it was here. So now what I can do is I'm looking for a break retest already. I already got the supply line and market profile. Now I got the sim dots to help out. So you don't want to trade the sim dots by themselves, but they're great. They're a great tool with market delta down there. I mean, if it turns green, it's positive market delta. It turns red, it's negative market delta to let you know when we need to be buying and selling. The third thing that is very important is, which is the most important of all, is you got to find the trend. Okay, so none of this means nothing to me. Market profile, supply demand, and the sim dots. If I don't know the trend direction, I got this blue level right here. I call it the line in the sand. Uh, it's a volume and price indicator, which shows us if we are above it, we're bullish. If we're below it, we're bearish. So my trend chart over here, obviously you can see we're very bullish right now on the market. So what I want to do, since I'm above this line in the sand indicator, this blue level, I want to look for a break retest. I'm trying to break through this market profile, which is the supply demand right on top of it. I'm trying to break through it. I'm trying to retest it, and I'm trying to set the next higher high. I'm trying to get to the next level. Now look at the next level over here on my supply line. My supply line is all the way up to 71 a quarter. So if I can get a break retest at 61 and three quarters, then I, I can see what? I can see us having a 10 point S&P run because I'm not looking to trade the S&P for a point, half a point, two points like a lot of novice traders do and risk two points. We're trying to go for a 10 point run. Yesterday was a 20 point run. I give big heads up on with a two and a half point stop on that one. Sometimes it's around a one and a half to two tick stop depending on your time frame. But we're trying to do a reward to risk of at least four to six to one reward to risk. We're trying to risk four to six hundred dollars uh, or we're trying to reward four to six hundred, trying to risk around a hundred on average per trade. So when you get a twenty to one reward to risk like we had yesterday, this is a this is basically a, a almost an eight to ten to one reward to risk here. If we break out and retest, we got about an eight to ten to one, depending on your fill, reward to risk. So that's a great pro high probability trade. So you can see the future supply and demands that it showed me. There's a big spread between them, 57 a quarter to 71 a quarter. But I want to break out a 61 a quarter here, retest and go long. And this is how we did it yesterday. Because yesterday, like I said, when I marked these levels up, three levels are marked right here at 830. And they became ultimate strong levels. In fact, they became the most important levels in the whole trading day. I only marked up three levels for the whole. I guess, dang it! I see, get this. I only marked up three levels for the whole day at 8:15, 8:20. There it was. One, two, three. So when you do that, you can see how important they are. This is a low of the session. This was the high of the session. And this middle one right here, I said, look for break retest. And I said, I put this box in here for you. I said, we got a 20 point possible S&P point play. That ended up to be right dead on. It stopped almost to the tick on the retest. And she took off 20 S&P points. And I believe it almost stopped right at the high too. The supply line, I think, caught it. What was the high on that? The high on that was 57. My supply line was 57 a quarter that you knew 48 hours ahead of time. So you knew that 48 hours ahead of time, 57 was a possible high for the session. It actually stopped within a quarter point. A low down here, the low was 60 and three quarters. I'm sorry, the low was 06 and three quarters, sorry. And same thing. So you got to use these supply and demand lines and these market profile levels to assist you in trying to find the major inflection points. And that's what we'll do here in our next trade. So I'm looking for a... The bias is up here. We got a bias up. We're above my line of sand, blue level. My volume and price indicator right here. 
this blue level, that's our line in the sand, telling us our trend is up. My next supply line is up here at 50.71 a quarter. So we got room to run. We got a 10 point S&P play possibly coming right now. I want to break through this market profile, market profiles resistance right here and supply line. Here's my resistance levels. It's got rejected here within a quarter point each time. Rejected three times. So what I want to do, I want to close a couple candle close outside here. I want to retest it. I want to see positive market delta over here on my delta chart. That's right here. It'd be nice to have symmetry dot confluence, but you don't need it. One one of those three uh, one of these two indicators are tradable by themselves. Either market profile or supply demand line. Symmetry dots is a second to third tier indicator. You can't trade it by itself or you'll just get stopped out over and over again. But you can use it as a confluence indicator. So what we'll do is on this breakout, we'll see if it breaks out. If it retests, we'll have a chance at symmetry dots on a couple trades if the market starts getting away from it. And that's what we try to do. We try to look and see where market profile, supply, demand. Because these are electronically traded markets. It has nothing to do with my opinion, nothing to do with yours, nothing to do with Gerald. You let the market tell you, because these are electronically traded markets, where the order flow is. This is all the order flow, this market profile, from all the top algorithms, from all the top brokers, brokerage firms, all the banks, hedge funds, prop firms. It's spitting out natural support and resistance. And you can see how accurate it is. The accuracy is uncanny. But what we have to do is we have to qualify it. Okay, we've got to qualify these breakouts. So this breakout right here, I'm looking for a two-candle close outside, then the retest, and then we'll see if you can go. Let's see if it fails. Let's say we break two candle close outside of it, and then we close right a candle close right back below it. Then you don't trade it. You don't trade because it's a false breakout. Let's say it closes two candles outside of it, and it gets you in by a candle close by a green reversal candle, and then it closes right back below by the supply demand and the HVA. If it closes right back below, take a small loss. You better get ready to reverse it. The market is educating you. It's educating you and telling you this, this is a false breakout. False breakouts can be huge. Then I would look for the market to go all the way from HVA, come all the way down to LVA on the, on the next uh, run. And sometimes that could be 15, 20, 25 S&P points. It happens quite a bit. So you know, if you do get false breakouts, it's okay. Take a small loss. Look to break back inside of HVA. Let it retest. Take the other side and come all the way down. Let the market tell you what to do. That's a key. We're not guessing at this stuff. This is not a guessing game. Okay? When I was a guest speaker at the Las Vegas trade show a couple years ago, there's over 6,000 traders. I keep telling members this around the world, and a lot of them counter trend trade these markets. They're trying to short this right now. They're trying to short or fade this market at this resistance at 61 and a half. We're not going to try to do that. We're above the line in the sand right now. We're above. We're above the control point. If you're above the line in the sand, this blue level, this, this price and volume indicator, and you're above this volume indicator right here, the control point, the most volume is traded, you better be bias up. You better not try to, sh try to short this at 16 half. You know, we, we're not going to try to short this until we get direction to the downside. You know, we're trying to buy the breakout retest right now. We're smarter than the average opponent. Because a lot of traders and all the traders I talk to in Las Vegas, the majority of them have lost a lot of ticks in stocks and futures and currency because they try to guess the top and guess the bottom. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to buy high, sell higher, short, low, buy lower. We're letting the market tell us what to do. And then what we try to do is we try to read the tape and let these indicators, these leading indicators, these are not moving average buy and sells. These aren't using the, the MAC is just a horrible indicator by itself. Um, it just It's a trend indicator and it's just terrible by itself. It'll get you whipsawed and chopped. So we're not trying to do that. We're not looking for divergence or anything. Those are second, third tier indicators. We're looking for first tier indicators, market profile, supply, demand. We want to break through here. We want to retest. We want to see this give us positive market delta to get us going. And if it breaks out, if it doesn't close back below it, we got ourselves a high probability trade. That's when we try to put the money at risk. You don't try to put your money at risk on just trying to guess a breakout and say, let's go long right now. No, that's trying to outguess the market. We're not smarter than the market. I'm not smarter. You're not smarter. What we got to try to do is we got to let the market give us what it wants to give us. No one takes from the market. You don't take from the market. You don't go into the market and say, I'm going to make $500 today. It doesn't work that way. You may have a big day. You may have a slow day. It depends what the market is. The market tells you when to buy and sell. 
And when you get into that mode, when you start listening to what the chart tells you instead of what you tell yourself, then you start coming up with successful, successful trades. So we got to let the market get us in. We got to let the market get us out. We don't get out ourselves. We just execute based upon what the market tells us what to do. Okay? So that's our top indicators we like to do. Now, like I said, I'm coming out with the, the auto that is going to be confluted with this that will show you these when they automatically conflue. That's what traders in the room and I are working on now. It's, uh, it's going to give you an audible alert uh, verbally uh, when two of these three indicators come together and actually two of four indicators because I added the line in the sand down here also on a break retest because I love trading the break retest off this line in the sand. It's one of my favorite trade setups. So, you know, they'll give you a verbal alert. They'll give you a visual alert also. So, but you can read this yourself. It's not hard. Market profile, supply, demand, two top indicators, third tier supply, and then we're good to go. All right.